Hello again. Yesterday, I made the trip to the local rubbish centre to get rid of some boxes and I went into their shop there and they tend to sell old stuff very cheaply and uh, I saw a few cameras. So this is really just to see what I picked up and for how much and whether or not I got anything worthwhile. So these cameras I managed to get for the grand price of uh, £2 each and um, Roughly in order of date, I would say that we have, starting on the left side, a Sony Cybershot. And this looks well used. It's got some writing on the front that's kind of come off. It's uh, 3.2 megapixels, so back in the day would have been fine, really, really kind of pushing it. I would say that the minimum that you really need to print photos out would be 4 megapixels. That's from my personal um sort of point of view in terms of what I've dealt with in terms of printing pictures in the past. So um, I did have a camera that was around three megapixels and um, okay on, on small pictures and probably okay for, uh, for using for some basic web uh, page work um, or if you're actually setting things then it might be worth um, using a smaller kind of picture for that. Um, so yeah, so 3.2 megapixels is probably your minimum. So uh, what's interesting though, th th this has got a standard sort of free time zoom, um, but it has a feature on the top. It says MPEG Movie VX, and uh, this would also be the uh, a camera that would use a, um, a proprietary memory card, and that was developed by Sony, the Memory Stick. This is actually Memory Stick Pro, and there happens to be one in here. So I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to get anything off of that to see, well, to see if there's anything on there. I guess as long as I can power up the camera, I should be able to review what's what's on that stick, if anything. So um, that's just a 16 megabyte. So that kind of shows you how small the picture sizes were. And then moving along, we have a Canon, and it's a PowerShot A710IS. So it's got image uh, stabilization, and I'm not sure it's looking like this is broken. So this one uh, possibly possibly is broken and doesn't come with any memory card or anything. But the good thing is it uses uh, two AA batteries, which means that at least I can give it a go without having to spend money on a proprietary uh, battery for it, which was often the case with a lot of cameras. And then moving along, we've still got one in its case here. And this to me looks to be the most recent camera, it's a Nikon Coolpix, and although it's got the Nikon name, um, very cheaply made camera, it's showing a bit of discoloration on the um, on these screws. So it might not work. Could have uh, seen some water, I guess. We're gonna hopefully find out as the video progresses. But it does actually have a memory card. I don't realise that. Let's have a look. Whoa, it's an eight gigabyte memory card looks reasonable so um, that would mean to me that this is quite a recent camera and uh, by looking at it it's got to be probably 10 years old or maybe just over so that's my feeling there there's no there's nothing about megapixels on this camera it's a uh, Coolpix L29 so I can google that shortly okay let's start with the Sony so move these out of the way so I always like the design of these I never had one I guess they were possibly a little bit pricey at the time. But this looks like it came out at a time before the proprietary um, lithium batteries were used. So um, so that's quite good. That means I can uh, put some batteries in here. Now, what might not be good is, depending on when this camera came out, if it came out at the time when there was a lot of issues with the CCD chips. So um, there was quite a bit of a problem where if you had a camera from a certain time in the 2000s, um, a lot of the cameras would be broken because of their uh, sensors would deteriorate and um, you just couldn't use them, so unusable. There was a lot of recalls and people had their cameras sort of fixed and stuff. So um, yeah, let's hope it doesn't fall into that bracket. That's Put some in. And where are we? Power. Okay. Nice. Okay, so this says actually 2003, so that does um, kind of show that this is quite an old camera, 20 years old. I'm just going to uh, 
accept the default clock setting for now. And it says no memory space. But look at that. It does seem to be working. But what a tiny screen. On a plus side though, it's got a viewfinder. Now a lot of cameras did away with viewfinders, um, at least these optical ones. And um, I always thought they were really useful actually because the amount of times when you were out on a summer holiday and it'd be really bright and you'd be trying to take a picture and um, relying on this size screen without this is, uh, it, you know, could be quite tricky. And the technology, the screen technology, it's obviously improved over the years. Um, so cameras are kind of brighter now, or the, or the screens are brighter. Um, but um, yeah, well, that's good to see. So 2003, maybe just before the issues. And we've got some pictures in here and they look like these pictures of people running from 2013 so that would have been the last time this camera no, it's gone part of the lens the last time this camera would have been used okay so let's go to setup and see what sort of menus we had it's a little bit noisy but it's got moving image mpeg movie Smart zoom, date, time, so various uh, things that would probably get stored on the uh, picture, the, like the date and time. Um, format, so we can format things. I'm not going to do that at the moment. Power save options, LCD brightness, normal, uh, dark, LCD backlight, beep on, language OK, USB connect, normal video out, PAL. So it looks like it's supported a few different things. That's pretty cool, isn't it? I'll put it into movie mode. Oh, no memory space for camera, but then for movie mode, it's in there is. Is that right? Uh -huh. Very little for uh, for movie, but it has, it has managed to. Uh, yeah, it's managed to record something. So movie mode MPEG, and it's um, six forty. By 480, I would imagine. I don't know what the uh, frames per second would be. We need to Google that. But um, it's got a, it's got a rubber that's still fine, hasn't deteriorated. Got a separate DC in, so it looks like the batteries may be charged in situ. I have to look into that as well. It's got um, USB out, so we could get stuff off this uh, camera, put it into a computer, and uh, AV out as well, which is good for playing back movies on your telly so yeah so that's not that's not too bad okay let's move on so that's the um just before i move on that's the smart zoom dsc p72 turn that off and uh yeah let's move that over there moving on to the canon at the time i didn't really look at it very well and um, i think we're going to find something that's a bit uh, a bit of a rubbish item but anyway let's see so um it's it's obviously been dropped at some time or badly marked there there's some dents and the lens doesn't look like it's retracted properly which is why this is slightly open here but this would have been a half decent camera i would say so 7.1 megapixels is plenty enough um a710 is so image stabilization as well and it's even got a few more options so that's sort of standard usb connector we saw on the sony it's got dc and av out so very similar to the sony there it would have been um quite a few years later though than the sony i would say probably what are we looking at so maybe 2010 possibly for this camera around then It'd be interesting to see actually because i've not had a look online so I'm just guessing at the moment. Lots of modes here, so set to the auto, but there's the uh, manual, and you've got the aperture modes, program, various different modes actually. You've got dedicated ones for landscape and taking pictures of people, video modes as well, so um, pretty good. You've got the uh, playback here of uh, whatever you've got in your memory card. There was also a possibility, it looks like, to mark it for printing or syncing to maybe a Canon printer. Um, it's macro as well on this one. I think, yeah, there was macro actually on the Sony. 
some menu displays and the all important optical zoom, which is nice. Um, so quite a small form factor with 7.1 megapixels, about six times zoom. So uh, quite an impressive zoom there. All right, let's get some batteries into that one. Two batteries here. It looks like it's got a, um, a separate battery to retain settings. I would hazard a guess that's probably uh, depleted by now. Especially if it hasn't had batteries in for a while. Okay, really not expecting anything from this. So let's try powering on this uh, two pounds camera from Canon. Oh, <laughs> okay. Clear screen, no, no um, cracks. Let's just key along and uh, see. Checking the autofocus, if it's slow or not. Taking a little bit of time to focus on things, but it's it's trying, isn't it? It's trying. Okay. Oh, I'm pretty shocked actually. It seems to be working. I might need a little bit of a, uh, yeah, it's a bit mucky. Let's see if I can um, give it a little uh, wipe around here. I've given this a little bit of a wipe round here and um, it actually seems to be reasonable at focusing. I've just been focusing out of the window upstairs on the landscape in front and um, it, it doesn't seem to be too bad. It may be that it needs a bit of exercising as well because obviously if it's not been used for quite some time it may have uh, started to uh, kind of seize up a little bit. I think the lens is clean so it's complaining because I don't have a memory card in there. Okay let's just turn this one off. Oh, I like the um, lit indicator on there. Actually before I turn it off, haha let's have a look. There's nothing at all. So there's no internal memory in this whatsoever. So some of these cameras did um, allow you to uh, record a couple of stills to uh, inbuilt memory, but not this one. It's got the focus assist lights. Okay, so let's turn that off and just see it retract. Oh, it's gone back in. It's gone in nicely. So there you are. Whoever got rid of this camera probably took the batteries out and didn't even, you know, close it properly. Or maybe the batteries were depleted and it kind of half, cl well, partly closed. Oh, that's good. I'm not too worried about that there, actually, if the actual uh, camera works. So I think it'd probably be quite good, wouldn't it, if I do a video in the future with this camera, or actually with all three of these cameras and compare the picture quality. That's going to be my next video because it's good to see what you can get for a couple of quid a camera and then put them head to head and see which ones produce the uh, best pictures. I think that would be pretty cool. I think the lens, it looks, it looks clean. Just a little bit dirty on, on here. I don't know if it's scratched though. There might be, there may be a little scratch. There may be a little scratch to the lens here, I've just noticed. I'm seeing when I zoom slightly. But whether or not that would be picked up in pictures is another thing. So, uh, yeah, not a bad result. That's um, sort of two out of three so far, although I haven't tested, um, obviously, the memory card. I'll do that in a minute once I've looked at the Nikon, I think. I'll put this one down. So put the batteries into this camera. I haven't powered it on yet. Just having a quick look, because um, earlier I mentioned about the screws being a little bit rusty looking, and uh, that may not be so good. So um, yeah, even the surface here looks a little bit discolored where the uh, lens is. Okay, so let's uh, attempt to power on. Oh, it flashed. Choose date, 
choose time zone and set date and time. I'm just going to say no. Press this button in shooting mode for shooting mode selection menu. Wow. Easy shooting mode. Portrait, smart portrait, auto mode. So already it's telling us it shoots in 720p high definition. Let's have a look at the front. So it looks fairly clean. So this is a surprising uh, test for me because I was expecting at least one of these cameras not to power up. So uh, this one is powering up fine and seems to be making all the right noises. Not sure on the quality there though. Okay, let's have a look at replay. Not many pictures on there, which is just as well. Any idea where that is? Who's that chap there? Anyway, that's good. That means that there's uh, lots of room here to uh, take pictures. I think it's moaning here about setting the time because we haven't set it. That's just my, uh, yeah. It looks like it's just set to go out to its optical limit here in the zoom. I'm not sure if the, um, it's a little bit lazy on the uh, selection there. If, if they all do that. I'm obviously a bit close, aren't I? So maybe, maybe let's do, uh, let's do macro. So we can get it a bit sharper. It feels cheap. It might be a Nikon. Oh, that's better, isn't it? That was a much better uh, picture there. It may be a Nikon, but it's still a, um, a cheap one. Shall we check the flash? As we should do. Let's uh, go back to scene. Let's go to false flash or flash fill. It's all flash, isn't it? That didn't flash. Slow sync. Auto with red eye off. Fill flash. Can I not force it? Oh, is it because I'm still in macro? Just taking a picture under the table in the dark and although this is flashing to flash it's not flashing so I would say this camera has a broken flash unless anyone can tell me tell me better so what I'm going to do now is briefly take the memory card out of that one put it into the Canon and just see if it does take pictures. It's saying no memory card. Cannot record. That could be because this memory card may be too much for it. It's a um, it's an 8 gigabyte memory card, class 10, it should be alright shouldn't it, thinking about it, it's not huge huge, so you would think it would be alright, let's try again, ah, it was, a, it was obviously 
um, not making contact very well. I think it's charging. Is it charging the uh, flash up? There you go. Flash works on that one. So, so far, this has been the surprising camera and the one that's probably going to be the most useful camera. That's the Canon PowerShot. And this one here, this camera here is more of a kind of interesting camera from the early days of digital cameras. So this would have been very expensive at the time, I would have said. And it'd be interesting to find out. Okay, let's see if I roughly write with, um, with the years on these. So just having a look online, uh, just to see how popular these cameras were. Uh, start with the Sony, the uh, P72. Um, now, when I mentioned about the smart zoom, um, it actually refers to the digital uh, zoom element of the optical zoom. So uh, that's something that I wouldn't recommend um, because uh, obviously you lose some detail. Um, although I believe you could use it with the video mode and uh, that would be less obvious with the video mode if you were doing digital zooming. Uh, so that's what I can make out of it there. Um, the, the camera itself looks like it was a popular camera and uh, took good pictures externally outside. Um, so not a great camera indoors, but then a lot of them weren't really uh, back then. So that's not surprising. Um, now the MPEG uh, format, the movie mode is actually MPEG-1. Um, so um, that was just a sort of standard thing. And uh, the frames uh, per second was, uh, was down at uh, 16 frames per second. Now, um, the thing with the Memory Stick Pro is uh, the memory cards are quite expensive now compared to standard SD cards. So unless you can get one that comes with a camera that's got a reasonable amount on, then you may uh, sort of defer this range of cameras. Um, so uh, the one that comes in this camera is only 16 megabytes. So that's not going to be uh, not going to be great for uh, taking much with, unfortunately. So um, I've, I've not had a look to see how much the bigger cards are, but it it was touted that you could go up to two gigabytes um, with this camera. So um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if that was possible or not. So uh, there's a little bit of information about that. But they were um, they were generally very popular. This design was a classic design that stood out in a lot of the Sony uh, cameras of the time. So um, they are worth uh, worth looking at for now if you can get one in a in a better condition than this. So although this one does seem to uh, work fine, it's obviously had uh, some use and it's lost its uh, sort of markings on the front there, the odd sort of scrape and dent. But um, yeah, built very well actually and uh, very popular for its time. So let's move on to the uh, Canon A710 and find out a bit more about that. And for the Sony as well, um, it was manufactured in uh, 2003. So not that long after actually, in 2006, this camera came along and it was a revamp of an earlier model. Um, it offers uh, more megapixels than uh, before and um, has a reasonable movie mode actually. So um, 640 by 480 and uh, that can be up to 30 frames per second and you can go even higher up to 60 frames per second with a 320 by four, by, sorry, a 320 by 240. So um, optical zoom set at six times optical zoom and the lens is a f2.8 and 35 to 210 equivalent zoom. So um, not a bad camera actually, and uh, it had a it had a pretty uh, good review uh, when it came out, and was pretty popular. I think a lot of the Canons of this uh, sort of age are well made, and everything about them is sort of quality. So um, I I owned a bigger sort of Canon camera um, that had a a bigger sort of zoom on it. I think it was only. Was it only six megapixels? It may have been. It was a bigger body than this. That's definitely one I'm going to be uh, trying out. And then we move on to the Nikon, the uh, L29. Surprisingly, this camera looks to be uh, nine years old. So um, this was released in um, sort of January time of uh, 2014 and um, got a uh, quite a large um, megapixel count of 16 megapixels so that was um, quite a bit but obviously the compromise there is the size of the sensor um, so I would always argue to find a decent 
camera with a decent size sensor. Don't go too crazy about the megapixels because once you get past a certain point, then um, it's it's really of limited use unless you're really highly skilled and you want to do lots of post-processing um, and the like. So um, yeah, so a bit of a um, a bit of a plasticky sort of camera this one, and uh, this design actually is is quite similar in the way it looks to the Fuji. Um, sort of cameras that came out around the same time or maybe possibly before that um, so they kind of all, all went for this kind of bulk I suppose because of the battery compartment being there um, the zoom the controls and such like the screen over this side um, but um, but nevertheless you know a decent camera if you're out on holiday um, sort of doing a bit of sightseeing you might be near a beach you know sand and stuff so um, a reasonable camera for that sort of thing but um, but really, you know, it's it's got the name Nikon, um, but it's probably manufactured by someone else for Nikon. Not much to say about that one, really, apart from oh, it's got an a AV out on the bottom here. I missed before, um, but that doesn't look standard to me. So um, you would have needed the cable that uh, came with the camera in, in the box. So I'm um, not sure what's behind there. Oh, it's nothing. <laughs> yeah, it's just part of the uh, part of the door side of the door so um yeah so that's the nikon and uh now these cameras i'm obviously most pleased with the canon in the middle i think that one will prove to be the more useful camera um, although having said that the nikon is the same zoom lens so six times and six times and um that's quite interesting so um it'd be good to compare quality actually so you've got a camera that's almost 10 years older than this one um and this one itself is almost 10 years old now so um yeah quite a mix of cameras there. Well I hope you um, enjoyed this video about these uh, cameras I picked up for um, two pounds so just over two bucks um, each from a uh, from a, a, a rubbish tip um, not far from me so um, if you'd like and uh, subscribe then I can do some more videos in the future. Thank you very much for watching. Bye for now.